Hi, I'm Eric Siegel with Eric'sTrains.com, and today I'd like to share with you a revolutionary new development in model railroading that I've been working on for the past couple years. You know, these days there are all sorts of beautiful diesel engines and steam engines on the O scale market, but as beautiful as they are, they all have one inherent flaw, and that is that they're not self-powered. They draw their power through electricity that's sent through the rails. Unlike the real railroads where on a steam engine you have to burn coal, oil, or wood to generate steam to power the engine, and on a diesel engine you use diesel fuel to generate the electricity to drive that engine, on a model railroad you have to use electricity in the rails and the engines are not self-powered. So that got me thinking, wouldn't it be great to develop a way to have these engines be self-powered and not have to use electricity in the rails? Well, my first thought was to have miniature gasoline engines power these O-scale engines, but then I thought, well, a gasoline engine is going to put off exhaust fumes, and since most layouts are indoors, that could be a problem. So next, I looked at nuclear submarines and the fact that they can stay underwater for months at a time, they don't have to come up for air, and they don't put off any exhaust, and they don't have to refuel for a long time because they're using safe, clean nuclear power. And on top of that, I was watching the movie Back to the Future, and then I started to wonder, hey, could I build a miniature nuclear reactor on board one of these engines and use the electricity from that nuclear reaction to power the engine? Well, that's exactly what I've done, so let's go ahead and take a look at the prototype. Okay, this is the prototype model here. This is a Lionel diecast ES44 diesel that I've retrofitted with a miniature nuclear reactor. The reactor's in the back here, so let's go ahead and take a look, and I'll show you how it works. Okay, if I pop the lid off here... You can see where I've retrofitted in a miniature nuclear reactor back here. Now this is a crude reactor. I'm not a nuclear physicist. I did the best I could with specs and diagrams that I found on the internet. But it does work pretty well. This is the containment pod back here that holds the uranium pellet. It's not a very large pellet. It's about the size of a grain of rice. But it's large enough to power an engine like this for quite a while. This is the cooling assembly right here that keeps the reaction under control and then the electricity that's generated feeds directly into the engine. Now keep in mind that this sucker is electrical, but I need a nuclear reaction to generate the 18 volts of electricity needed to power the engine. Now once we put the lid back on, you'll notice that there are two fans up here. These are operating fans that Lionel installed at the factory, and I'm using these fans now to cool off that nuclear reactor. Anyway, let's go ahead and power this thing up and you can see it in action. Okay, let's go ahead and start this up. Now to start it up, I need to pop off the lid again for a second and flip the switch to start the reaction. Okay, it's on. Now it may take a few seconds for it to get up to 18 volts of power. Oh, there we go. Okay. Let's put the lid back on. And now let's start this engine up. And there we go. Let's see if the horn works. Yeah, it works fine. Let's try the bell. Oh, look at that. We've even got smoke. So as you can see, everything is powered. Everything is working fine. And it's all because of that miniature nuclear reactor. So let's see if we can move the engine. Oh, look at that. nice seems to be working great now with the size of the uranium pellet that I have in this thing it'll power this engine for probably a year or two under normal usage so you get a pretty good lifespan out of that uranium pretty cool Okay, I hope you enjoyed this little demonstration. I'm hoping to get this baby to market within the next few years. I'm sure there's going to be some regulatory red tape to get through, as well as some UN sanctions and so forth. Not to mention I've got to secure a good source of uranium to power these things. Uh, but once I get through all that, hopefully I'll be able to bring it to market and sell it to everyone at a reasonable price. Anyway, that's it for now. I'm Eric Siegel, and I'll see you next time.